So we are going to see what Savitri is saying in response to the advances Satyavan was making towards her and she says and 3.348 and Savitri musing still replied to him speak more to me speak more oh Satyavan Speak of thyself and all thou art in him. I would know thee. Isaac in that table gave to Peter in the chamber of our souls. Speak till a light shall come into my heart. And my mood, mortal mind shall understand what all the deathless be in me. Being. It knows that thou art he, my spirit has sought, and is a strong in this ancient form across golden spaces of my life. Something definitely has happened in Savitri, there is not only the recognition of who Satyavan is, but also a light has come into her soul why she is here, what for she has come here, what this meeting or theirs is going to be. In fact, she says, speak more to me, speak more. Now, what does she want from him? What does she expect from him? Why she is insisting on that? What is it that was lacking in what he had told so far? That she is craving for that and it is in response to that so to say, the narrative, the story is being taken forward also. Essentially, we have here a very powerful line, in fact, a very powerful sentence earlier. Satyavan was killing Savitri. The spirit was saved, the body lost and new, lived still with death and ancient eternity. It was, that was the dilemma. That was the difficulty he was facing. Yes, very spiritual attainments, immortality, everything. Yes, those he has won. But what about the body? What about the physical? Physical gets left here unattended. Unattended. Even Gita speaks of the physical that this body is worn out and then it is discarded like a used cloth. Is that really going to be the fate of the body? That it has been thrown away after it is used. Jirna, Aniva, Sanshi, that is what Gita says. It becomes old, it's worn out and it has been discarded. Is that going to be the fate of the body? In other words, Satyavan is convinced about what Gita says, but he is not happy with this aspect of the Gita. Why the body should be left out, abandoned? And it is in that sense, things have moved forward from the time of the Gita. At that particular point of time, a certain spiritual development had to be done, it was being carried out. Now, the spirituality has to enter into the physical. Immortality up there, all right, wonderful, Amrutas, it's okay. But what about the place here? What happens here? Is creation here? Is it to be abandoned? 
and given up and go and live up there. That has been the spiritual dilemma. And that is what Satyavan is speaking until now. But the moment he looks at Savitri, he says, No, it cannot be so. Body lost and viewed until now. It cannot be. You have come. It means that there is a future for the body. There is a hope for the body. There is a meaning in the physical. And it is that which has to be established. The reality must come and dwell in the physical. That is what he sees at the very first glance at Savitri. The spirit was saved, yes, the body lost and lived, still uh, lived still with death and ancient ignorance. Now he speaks of ancient ignorance. Ancient ignorance born up in conscience. The first movement, first step, first progress which has been made from the unconscious is towards ignorance. Ignorance is the beginning of the process of evolution. And it is that ancient ignorance which is lost in the body, which has to be tackled, which has to be handled. The unconscious was its base, the void is fed. So what happens finally? It gets dissolved in the void, it gets scattered up into the void. Is that going to be free to the body? So he at once sees, no, it cannot be. This girl, this lady, this radiant person is there now, and she has the key in her hand, in her soul, to change things. It is she who will do that thing. And it is in that context that he says, the child boy shall be reborn. That is the crucial line. Child devoid from Shunya, from zero, from nothing. The whole thing has come up. Satyavan's birth is from that. He is a permanent avatar in the void, stationed there in the void. And that child which has started appearing now in the creation, he should be reborn in God. Reborn not only in his soul, not only in his mind, not only in his vital life but also in the physical, completely, in every respect to the reborn in God. My matter, therefore he says, my matter shall you pay the inconscious trance. My body, like spirit, shall be free. That is the whole thrust of this argument. It shall escape from death and ignorance. Again, he is repeating the same thing. Live still with death and ancient ignorance. The body shall escape death and ignorance. That is the hope, that is the expectation, that is the fulfillment of their meeting of Satyavan and Savitri. Now, when Savitri hears this thing, suddenly something in her wakes up. It is not only logic mental area, not just a lover's advance to a girl, not just that. It is a reality which has got awakened in the soul of Yes, why am I here for? The power of love which got awakened up in her has brought the full thrust, full impact, full force of her birth theory. She found love and it is that love which has made her aware why she is here. Yes, body must be saved. And therefore, it is in that body, she said, Yes, tell me more, tell me more what exactly you want. Body is all right. Perhaps body is the beginning of things. Once the body escapes death and ignorance, then the true divine manifestation becomes possible. So therefore, escaping death and ignorance is the beginning of things. You have come, it will escape. New manifestation, new creation, it is a starting thing. And that is what is going to happen. You have to say, speak more. Speak more to me, O Satyavan. Speak of thyself and all thou art within. I would know thee as if we had ever lived together. See, I mean, the identity of theirs 
has got kindled by the flame of love. It is that which has kindled that in them. Yes, we have been there together in the chamber of our soul. It's not that we are waiting today, just now here, that we are seeing each other only for half an hour ago, we have come together. It's not that we have been there for a long it is that knowledge, that understanding, that perception, that realization which has come into our soul immediately. In other words, Savitri's yoga got fiddled with that, has started with that. Her mission is already defined in its particular limit. And in the course of time, as things will happen further, then that mission will have been carried further. Then Nara will come and say this, say that, etc. She will do yoga, she will conquer death. All those things happen in the course of time. She will speak till the life shall come into my heart and my mood, mortal mind shall understand. She says that, well, within, in my deep soul, I am aware of what I am, but I have taken human birth. The human way is there. Human ignorance is there. It is that which really got removed by what you are telling me. So that is what it has achieved. Such one utterance means that human will is just there around society that has got this space, that got removed. You see. Therefore, she said, and my mode and mortal mind shall understand even this mind which is coming in the way, and my will be convinced. Why it is there for what it has to do now. It knows that thou art he, my spirit has sought. It stands here for deathless being. In the previous sentence, what all the deathless being in me feels, it knows that deathless being in me, it knows that who you are. Whom I have been seeking for. That let us be known that it stands for the let us be. I mean, it's a strong in visitation and form. Yes, there are, I have been traveling for months and months and months from place to place, from kingdom to kingdom, lived in palaces, lived in villages, lived in farms, lived in temples, among various strong in places and forms. I said, no, you are the one who has really kindled that thing in me across the golden spaces of my life. So, this is a kind of an invitation of doing, taking things forward. Body is there, how it will happen, what is the difficulty, and it is that now which will be sort of narrated, described, elaborated in the subsequent part of response which is coming from Satyavan. He says, and such a one, like a replying heart, to the insistent calling of the flute, answer her questioning, and let stream to her his heart in many colored waves of speech. Now, actually, in what Savitri has said, there is not really any question as such. There is no question which she has put here. And she says, answer her questioning and let's say to her. She is not, she's not questioning it. She is sort of saying, they speak more to me. I would like to hear more to you. See. It, it, is, it is very beautifully presented, you see that way. And he is replying to her like a heart. Heart responding to fruit. Flute, well, has its own sweetness. The call of the flute player is always enchanting. It is the call to the divine. The call of the flute player is the call to the divine. Flute player's call. Krishna's flute, that is the symbol normally seen. So it is the calling of the flute to the divine, to the higher life. To the spiritual life, to the noble life, which is that 
Prabhupada is there. And she is asking that, future, tell me what right thing is there. And therefore, like a responding heart, 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 many strange instruments, many voices, many notes. In fact, it can run over how many? Eight, eight octaves, a good heart with large number of strings. Sometimes there are how many? 24 strings with there, you see. And it can play uh, on eight octaves up and down. In heart. So you can go and jump to whatever level you like, in whatever company you want to say. And it is therefore the kind of a richness of response which is come from below. When he says heart, yes, so many instruments you play from here, he responds. They will play in many colored waves of speech. So many octaves, so many notes, so many harmonies, they will get into woman there. Now, many colored waves of speech. Actually, we hear music with the ears, with the blind ears, <laughs> so to say. We see things with deaf eyes, we hear music with blind ears. Basically, when there is music, it is also accompanied by colors. You don't see those colors, music. It is accompanied by colors, also. visions, colors, they start floating to the music, you see. So, mention many colored waves of speech, it is that those colors, those shades are also coming here. Many colored, of course, means also the richness of her, also means the multiplicity of responses which can come from here. But essentially speech also accompanies colors. Well, uh, on one occasion, <coughs> you must have heard of it, Dilip Kumar Roy wanted to sing to hear him. You know that, no? <laughs> See. And then uh, he sat in the outside room and saw something there and he was listening to all that thing in his room. And then later on, when he was asked, he was asked, then she would say, yes, I could see colors coming down in that music. Many colored speech, voice, colors coming down. And of course, mother says also, when she is in the organ, how all those gods and goddesses come and doubt them. His heart in many colored waves of speech. So he is going to tell now what exactly he is wanting, where he had to move forward. But in response, to oh golden princess, perfect Savitri. Well, this is not just a prejudice of a lover trying to please his beloved. <laughs> See, they are meeting for the first time, it is not that. She, he sees something very deep and spiritual and beautiful and rich in her and perfect salvation. Perfect, he has already recognized in her that everything is present in her. In fact, in the earlier descriptions of Savitri, we have Satyavan described as a perfect shrine for the God of Love. Savitri is described as a perfect shrine for the God of Love. Perfect shrine for the God of Love. Near to intimate, near to earth, intimate, even those lines. I will just show you. At once, she was a stillness and the world. Stillness and the world. Calm, peace, the creative base and word, the expressive word. Actually, stillness and word in the spiritual sense would convey what is called satyam and rutam. Rutam, word, the dynamic aspect of truth and the pervasive aspect of truth. Pervasive aspect of truth, 
that is satya that is stillness and the dynamic aspect of rhythm movement rhythm that is the word expressive word a continent of self fusing peaks and ocean of an tumbling whirling fire the strand the silent or the god work her and then this is in her he found the vastness that he told who is he he the godhead of love he is the one who is seeking a place to dwell here where can he go on earth and dwell this place and he see the sanctuary the perfect shrine for that god of love in her he found the vastness like his own his high warm sacred ether he refound and moved in her as in his natural home in her he met his own eternity now that is the perfect shrine and that is the perfect savitri oh golden princess perfect savitri perfection sign for the god of love here rolling the line that you know